Hello everybody and welcome to an update on Pimega 4. We now have a split version from the Omni Universal CPU architecture self-booting one into a Raspberry Pi 4, 400, and a 5, along with a separate download for a 64 gig version of the Intel Pimega. This video in no way, shape, or form will supersede the main Pimega 4 release video. So if you're new to Pimega 4, please go back and check out that main video. That covers everything regardless of the version you're downloading on how to set it up. There's a couple things that I'm gonna go over here in just a second that will change from that release video, and that is how to copy Kickstart ROMs. We've listened to your constructive criticism, complaints, and otherwise to add features and fix some things that were questionable during the release, like Bluetooth for the Pi 400. Super Pursuit Mode for both sides. What is Super Pursuit Mode? We'll get into all that in just a second. This version is for the 4, 405 updates and the changes that have occurred since two months ago when we launched it. Same as always, this is not sold on any website. Well, it is without my permission or authorization. They're stealing it and trying to make a buck off what I give you for free. If you are new to Pymega and you feel it is beneficial to you, Please consider a donation of any kind, whether it's PayPal tip, a Patreon, a simple thumbs up, or comment. Thank you all for coming along with an old fat dude for another rendition of Pimega. This is the same Pimega 4 as before. It's just a different Linux environment split to support the Raspberry Pi 5 and Intel on a smaller platform. Minimum system requirements. Any PC that can boot UEFI, that includes the Intel Mac or a Raspberry Pi 4, 400, or the new 5 in any RAM range you can get. We're going to start with burning the image and how to copy the kickstart and what's a little different. Then I'll switch to this camera and we'll show the, the desktops. So I have my original Amiga 3000 3D printed Raspberry Pi 4. I have a Raspberry Pi 400. And then we have a 4 gig Raspberry Pi 5 and a Flirt case and my Raspberry Pi 5 8 gig in its little mini tower. Okay, so as normal, you're going to use Raspberry Pi Imager or Bellana Etcher, Bellina Etcher. What I do is, regardless of your version, don't worry about choose device, choose operating system, use custom, and browse to your image. ARM or Intel, if I write the Intel, choose your storage device. 64 gig card, which is a Walmart brand ONN. So it's replying at 62.2. Many cards lie about how big they are. So a 64 gig card may report differently depending on the manufacturer. So I use the crappiest card I could possibly find with the lowest reported lie. So that way when you hit next, this is kind of erased. You won't want to apply customization settings. All data will be erased. Are you sure you want to continue? Hit yes. This card is already written. Once the card has written and verified with Raspberry Pi Imager or the same thing, Bellana Etcher is very similar. It's a little faster because it doesn't do a verification. Flash from file, choose, choose your ARM or Intel image, say open, generic device. I want to do this one, whoops, and select and hit flash. It'll 62 gigs, same thing. Once it has written, go ahead and eject the card and put it back in. You will see a kick folder this time. It is a FAT32 partition and it tells you kick.rom goes here. So you would take your kick.rom and copy it there. And there it is. For the Raspberry Pi 5 series, all right, you're going to get a message like this. You must format the card when you reinsert your card after burning it in in uh, whatever etcher you want. Do not do that. You will see a boot FS pop up. Now, a lot of times, because I have a card reader, I have to actually unplug my card reader. And you'll see all the drives disappear in a second because my computer is just so fast. There we go. And I plug my card reader back in. If you're running off a USB stick, you'll be fine. But it's just my computer. You'll see a volume called boot FS. And inside of it, you'll see kick. Kick 
Here's your ROM. I copy the same ROM over. And then when you're done, eject your card the proper way. This is my Raspberry Pi 5. Pi Mega 4. Now I don't have a keyboard hooked up. So you should bear with me. So this is the Pi Mega 4, Raspberry Pi 4, 405 edition. Speed. 2540 MIPS, 794 megaflops, 2.43 million dry stones. This is not an accurate assessment of speed on a virtual. Everybody yells me about it, but I like numbers. More numbers, bigger, higher, better. Memory, of course, 128, a gig, and 8 mega chip. So if you hit F12 and then quit. I want to show you some new things here. In the top over here, we have launchers. Right now, it shows you your cores. And by default, you're in, well, this is 2.8 gigahertz in performance mode. Yours will be about 2.4 stock. Here we have launchers, this little raspberry. You can click it, and you can choose a drop down of whatever system you want. By default, if you click this, it'll load Pi Mega 4. Of course, the Wi Fi and networking control, and more importantly, Bluetooth is now available. And if I hit search, you'll see my Pixu on the wall and my little speaker. And continuing on, um, of course, your clock, your temperature in Freedom Units, if you want to change this, you can right-click on it and go to Properties and change it to Communist. This is a no Fs given power button, and this, oh, come on, and this is, of course, Restart. So you don't have to click Applications, Log Out, and then Shut Down. You can just click this button. Are you sure you want to shut down? Done. So that's the Raspberry Pi 5. Now, this is the 400 on its stock 1.8 gigahertz is a clock, right? There you go. So the Rebe on the Amiga, uh, the Pi Amiga desktop is the correct one. The one on the desktop of Linux is not. If you were to quit, now you'll see it's in 1.8 gigahertz performance mode, and that's the stock clock. And it only has uh, Amiga Live is on here, but it's only for Intel. It just has some configuration info. All I did was split the images, okay? It's the same as it was a music mod. An MP3. Can't play too much of that. I demo. I mean, it runs fine. Oh, I forgot how loud this is. On a Raspberry Pi unit, you can press this button right here. And it just, it'll just turn it off. So this is a Raspberry Pi 4. And real quick, on F12 and quit. It's stock clock a measly 1.5 gigahertz. Now, Super Pursuit mode is ran by default. If you hit Super Pursuit mode on the, it just puts all cores into performance mode. It's in startup. I just left it on the desktop. And as you can see, it boots fine. Perfect. Perfect. That sounds like the Friday the 13th. State of the art. How fast it loads. Raspberry Pi 4. Stock clock. 1.5 gigahertz. The Pi 400 is 1 eighth. The Pi 5 is 2.3 or 4. I forget. One of those two. Just stock clocks. Everything works fine. Now on AGS, I do have the F12 bar on so we can see it's holding at 50 hertz and the CPU load of what it's doing. If you don't want that on there, press F12, go to miscellaneous, and turn off the status lines and then save your config. And it's gone. So there's AGS, nice and clear for Mr. Paul Vince. Two unlimited. Still works fine. Our Amiga Vision, aka uh, Mega AGS, same thing. I'm a demo person, so I'm going to go into demos. Uh, Siesta. I had to turn my volume down because it was so loud on a lot of things. There we go. Works fine. Don't know what Okay, so here's a perfect example. This is a different card. So here it says on demand, right? 
Well, watch this. I didn't load Super Pursuit Mode in the default startup on this one. So I'm going to double click on it. It does nothing. Now when I click on this, it's 2.4 gigahertz performance. No more on demand. That's what Super Pursuit Mode does. Kind of like turbos everything. That is what you've asked for, even though I worked my butt off with the help of Mr. Jim and his noggin, knocking out the universal boot. But you're like, wait, what about the Intel people? Fear not. This is a USB stick on a Walmart crappy branded ONN 64 gig card. You'll see the blue grub loader. It's got a five second timeout automatic. So full Debian 12 on uh, the Raspberry Pi series machines and Intel of course. And I fixed the sudoers file so you can run things as the menu options. Run the menus as normal without sudoing something like Synaptic or whatever. Just run it. So there's the Intel and how it even says on the top at PyMigo on which version you're on. It'll just say PyMigo 4, register trademark, Intel AMD powered by Scalos. So that is the Intel side. Well, how does the Intel fare by default? This is in 2.4 gigahertz power save. Now Intel, there's super pursuit mode, it's going to prompt you for the password of Pi, which is Pi Mega. And you give it a second. And depending on how many cores you have, I think this has six or four. Now we're in performance mode. I can't get it to super clock because it's a PC. It controls it through its P state, I state, whatever. We got Amiga Live on Intel's. So you can play multiplayer online games against other Amiga people, just like their main release video. Here's Pi Amiga 4 in performance mode on an Intel i3 Nook from God knows when. How does it compare to the Pi 5? Pi 5 was 2.4 million. This is 812,948, 848 MIPS, and 16.39 megaflops. Here's a neat thing on Intel. We can go 68060 and say reset. And let's see how that compares. So 68060 emulation. Does say 060 all the way across. Man, it's about the same, 792. So we lost a little gigahertzes running in 060 mode. But it's still extremely fast. The reason why I left it in 040 was because of the uh, shapeshifter program. If, if you wanted to be a Macintosh, you need to be in 040 mode because Apple never embraced the 060. So there's no drivers for it. So that way you could run shapeshifter and just hit start and you'd be in a Mac in a matter of seconds. It was 8 and you can play Legion Suit Larry or whatever you want. You see the controls. Control panel is loading up there. And it'll yell at me that it didn't turn it off. Property sound works. And you can play whatever you want. You can see I was playing World of Warcraft. Special. Shut down when you're done. You're back to Pi Mega 4. If you have not seen the release video for Pi Mega 4, go check out the main release video. This video is just covering the split. Um, there are two images. You can download the Intel or the Raspberry Pi version. Pi 4, 400, and now the Raspberry Pi 5. It is the same as the Intel version. The only difference is there is no uh, Amiga Live on the ARM side yet. It will be coming hopefully when they get that ironed out, but until then, Intel is the only way to go for if you want to play the Amiga Live uh, configuration, which is hosted online and all the games and everything are online. And that is the Pi Mega 4 Split Edition. Now there's three. And uh, pick your flavor. So we have the Omni, which is the original one that I released. It boots on Raspberry Pi 4, 400, or Intel, one stick. And then we have the split versions. Intel, same as before, and now the newer Raspberry Pis. So I hope that helps you out. And the reduced size should mean all you people that don't have a 128 gig SD card or now have, you're going to erase it to put this on, you can expand this small image to give you more space. It's very tight. There's not a lot of free space left. Still read the README on the Amiga desktop or the PyMiga desktop. The Linux one, I mean, it's to give, 
you're going to be fine. It's, it's all pretty much the same stuff. The Kickstart ROM locations, please follow what I showed earlier in this video because now you can see the partitions on Windows or your Mac and you just copy the Kickstart ROM to that kick mounted folder and you're good to go. And one last thing, just like before, if you feel, if you're new to this and you feel that PyMega 4 has benefited you, feel free to join my Patreon, toss a brother a PayPal tip, super thanks, or just a like and a subscribe or comment below. It's not required, this is totally free, you don't have to buy it on any web store, I don't authorize it anyway, this is the only place to get it, the true version. People are going to steal it and scalp it on their websites and say it's their own and buy this, and it's a download version, and that's wrong. So, thank you guys for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.